Hey, 4xE fans. Uh, this video is being made for anybody with a Grand Cherokee 4xE or a Wrangler 4xE, and I, I kind of have to assume this would apply to the uh, Renegade and Compass, although I'm just not familiar with them since they aren't available in the United States. I just haven't got to know a lot about them, but one thing we know, uh, I'm going to preface this by what we know about this vehicle. One of the things we know, we want to avoid short engine runs on that direct injection gas engine when it's cold out because that can contribute to an oil dilution issue, which in and of itself is bad enough. And what the vehicle does to try to resolve oil dilution is it will eventually put you into what's called fuel oil refresh mode. Now, avoiding fuel oil refresh mode has been something a lot of people have taken on trying to do. What we really want to avoid is the oil dilution to the gas engine, because if your oil is diluted, then its viscosity is too low and you can cause excessive wear on the engine if you have a lot of oil dilution issues going on. So that's the reason that form exists, is to prevent that from happening. But if we can avoid those oil dilution issues to begin with by not doing a lot of short engine runs, then we can, you know, kind of help the whole thing out and not land ourselves in kind of a perpetual state of form or anything. So anyway, here's my, here's my thing that I have going on here. You can see I have nine miles of range there and I've plugged in the address that I'm going to and it says I have 13 miles to get there. So the difference of that few miles there actually could result in a short engine run that I want to try to avoid in some way, shape or form. And since the beginning of my trip was in kind of like a town scenario and the end of my trip is in a town scenario, but I've got this long stretch of country road between it, that's where I want to have my engine run so we can just get it out and get it on, get it running and let it run, let it get up to temperature down here. Not when we get into town, not at the end of our trip where we're not really going to get that temperature, that engine up to temperature and we're, we could actually cause more starts and stops if we just let the system fall into hybrid mode and it's starting and stopping at every stop sign that we come to. So we want to kind of avoid that. Sorry about the finger in the camera. So here's my strategy that I utilize. And there's two ways you can employ this strategy. One, we want to make this engine run for long enough to warm it up and also bridge the difference between our destination mileage and our range that we have. So what is that? Five miles that we have different. We don't want to do a five mile engine run. In this temperature, it just wouldn't get up to temperature. I found the other day it took about eight or nine miles, and that was even with downshifting one gear to get the RPMs up a little bit higher to make it warm up. So I couldn't even, you know, it wasn't even going to warm up on its own in that seven or eight miles. So here's the strategy that I'm going to employ. Now you could put it in eSafe. But again, if you uh, put it in eSafe, you want to make sure it's an eSafe charge over here on your thing. That way, it keeps the engine running. If you have it in e, if you have an eSafe plus battery save, then it's going to shut off at every stop sign. That's the very thing we're trying to avoid. One surefire way to keep this engine running is to use the manual um, shifting method. And if you don't know that, some people call that M8 mode. But what I don't want to do is just yank this thing over right now with it being as cold as it is, being a cold start running down the road, it's going to engage the engine right away. And, um, you know, I, I don't know, that could cause added wear and tear if you're loading a, an engine, you know, up to speed. So here's the methodology that I use. Come over here and I'm going to hit e-save. Now, it, the engine's going to start and it's going to go through a timed cycle. And right now during this cycle, the engine is not actually connected to the drivetrain in the transmission and everything. Somewhere in through here, there is a clutch that then, you know, that separates the transmission from the engine. Right now that clutch is open. The vehicle is running in what's called a series hybrid mode where the gas engine's running, the little motor out on the front of the engine, the P1 motor generator is running and it's actually providing some charge to the system. And you can probably even see that if we go back in here, you can see that it's actually adding some charge there. And uh, so we're gonna wait till that time cycle runs out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna throw the thing into M8 mode. Now you could just leave it in that e-save uh, plus charge. You could just leave that on it. But what we've been hearing is some people that get the uh, updates, the vehicle no longer keeps the engine running even when you have battery charge checked when you come to traffic stops. And that, 
that or again that's what we're trying to avoid we're trying to avoid those short engine runs so I don't know if you heard it there but the engine actually the clutch closed between the transmission and the engine and the engine is now loaded oh maybe not is it is it is it not yeah it is so now we're all hooked up and we're all running so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this into manual shifting mode now you do have to pay attention to what gear you're in and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the vehicle back in hybrid mode and um, you know like it says it's gonna automatically adopt or adapt for the most efficient run but the thing is right now I am forcing that gas engine run so the whole time that we're on this little trip it's gonna run now when you come to an intersection it will downshift when you you know you come and slow down it will downshift on its own but you will have to manually shift when you're taking off from a stop. You will have to kind of mind your RPMs over here on the left and not let them get over you know, 3,000 or so if you want to keep it efficient. Now, if you want to get a little sporty, you can run that up to four grand. But um, if you want to do it as efficiently as possible, you'll, uh, you'll want to keep those RPMs a little bit low, but not too low because if you do it too, if you try to upshift too quick it, just to keep the RPMs low, it's actually kind of hard on the engine. It's hard on the crankshaft and stuff, so you want to kind of avoid that. So we'll go back to our map. You can see we have 9.7 miles and five miles of range. Now what we will see is that this five miles of range is probably now going to stretch over 10 miles. Um, because we're doing this manual shift thing, we're kind of blending the two systems together. And that five miles isn't actually, you know, it doesn't recalculate just because you have it in the uh, manual shifting mode, it doesn't recalculate. So that five is gonna last a lot longer than what it normally would. So anyway, I know that was a lot of confusing stuff, but the whole point is now I'm at this traffic light and I don't wanna see this engine shut off since I just started it. I wanna keep it running and I wanna keep it coming up to temperature. And if you hit your left arrow button, you can get up in here into the vehicle information and you can see that your oil temperature, I've got it at 113 right now. It's going to, um, it's going to, we're going to want that to get up in the one, um, like the 180s, you know, 190 range if we can at all possible, but we want to get it up in those higher temperatures. That way it burns off any of that excess fuel that made it into the combustion chamber and is trying to make its way into our oil. It'll now burn that off and keep those temperatures up for that reason. So there we go. That was a long video to try to explain a very confusing and convoluted process, but just something to think about if you're trying to uh, prevent your oil dilution when it gets cold. You know, in the summertime, I probably wouldn't even worry about this a lot. I mean, I have just, it just not really become a thing that I've worried about too much. But, um, you know, during the winter time, when that oil dilution issue becomes more of a thing, that's when you want to pay attention to these kind of things. So there we go. Thank you for watching. Take care.